In this video, we're going to look at basic word use. First thing we need to do is open the program Microsoft Office Word 2007. If you have it on the desktop, then it would just be a double click to open the program. I don't have it here, so I have to go to the Start button. If you have the program in the Start menu, it would just be a single click to open that program. If you don't have it there, we can say All Programs, and this opens up everything in the machine, and then we need to navigate to Microsoft Office, and then Word 2007. And again, like I say, it's a single click to open the program window. Word will open with a blank document by default, and it will be called Document 1, as you can see up in the name box up here. And we can also see it in the taskbar down here. So this is the program window. The Office button is this circle to the top left up here. As you see, any time you mouse over or hover over a button within a program, in most cases a helpful hint will pop up. Here it tells us that the Office button it says click here to open, save or print and to see everything else you can do with your document. So if I click on the Office button I have New, Open, Save, Save As, Print, Prepare, which is preparing things for distribution, like it says, Send, which allows you to email or Bluetooth or Internet fax a document, Publish, which is for things like um, blogging or in an intranet, lots of computers connected, say, in an office somewhere, then you might be sharing the documents across your network. You can see it's identified by this little icon here with the folder with a little line below it. And then we have the close button. And close closes a document but keeps the program open. On the right hand side we have recent documents. This is a list of documents that you've used recently. The little pin icons, it says pin this document to the recent documents list. If you apply that, then it looks like a little pin. It means that this document will always be available within recent documents. And that's quite useful if you're working on a document and you know it's going to take more than one session. So you can have it pinned to the menu, and that way it will always be there, allowing you to open it quite quickly with a single click. To unpin a document, again, all you'd have to do is click on the little pin symbol. I'm going to close this document just so we can see how you open a new document. So again it's Office button and New and with Word 2007 you get this large new document dialog box pop up. If you're connected to the internet and you have a Microsoft Office Online account then you will be able to get all of these templates from Office Online. So it's um, if you're looking to produce a greetings card, shall we say, you click on the option and then it connects to the Office Online templates area. And then you get all of these templates that you can download and then change as you wish. If you wanted to download a card or any other item, all you'd have to do is select it by left clicking over the thumbnail and then click the download button. In this instance I'm going to ignore all these and just create a new blank document. So all you'd have to do is say blank and recent. Make sure blank document is selected and then on the bottom right hand corner click on the create button. This will give you a new blank document and the page layout will conform to the default properties that have been set. On my machine I set it so that it's a top bottom left and right page margin of two centimeters which we can see up in the ruler here. So it's two one zero and then seventeen eighteen nineteen and then 210 on the left uh, ruler. If I scroll down to the bottom, 
that's two centimeters as well. We'll look at changing the page layout in later videos. For now it's with the basics. So, a quick look at the quick access toolbar, which is to the right of the office button. The quick access toolbar contains quickly accessed icons. So it might be things that you use quite frequently that are contained in different tabs. So instead of having to navigate away from a tab and make use of a function and then have to go back to the original tab, we can use the quick access toolbar. A good example of this is in the spell checking, spelling and grammar. F7 is the shortcut key. If I was typing and I wanted to check the spelling, without having the quick access toolbar, I would have to go to review and then click on spelling and grammar and then go back to home. In this instance, all I have to do here is click on the icon in the quick access toolbar. To add or remove buttons from the quick access toolbar, we click on the drop down arrow. Everywhere that you see a click, a tick rather, that is already present in the toolbar. If you want to remove something, we just have to click on the word. To add something, again you just click on the word. By default, you'd probably have save, which is the little diskette icon, undo, which is the anti-clockwise pointing arrow from the top down, and redo, which is again anti-clockwise, but from the bottom up. <coughs> On the right hand side of the window, we have the minimize, restore down, and close buttons. So we're going to have a look at typing now. By default, again, the font will be set to Calibri and the font size will be set to 11. So that's the font style or font look, it's Calibri, and 11 is 11 70 seconds of an inch. One point is one seventy second of an inch. To type, all we have to do is start typing on the keyboard. We can see the insertion point is flashing to the top left hand side of the page. Just turn that off for a second. And that's where the text appears. The mouse cursor is currently set as an I beam when it's over the page. And that's be called an I beam because it looks like the cross section of an I beam, which looks like a capital I. And when you mouse over the ribbon, it looks like a north-west pointing arrow. As I say, to type, all we have to do is start typing. And if you weren't happy with the font or size, all we'd have to do is make a change. You can click on the drop-down arrow for font size, or font, rather. Uh, we have quite a long list of fonts available to us, and in 2007 we have an actual um, preview of that font. All of the font titles are written in that font size, or that font style. So we can either select from this long list. If you know the font that you're looking for, then because this text here is highlighted in blue, all we'd have to do is start typing in the font name that we're looking for. In this instance, I'm going to look for Comic Sans MS. So if I start typing Comic, and then you see it fills in the rest of the text for me and navigates to that area in the list. You do have to confirm your selection after you've typed it in, and the best way to do that is press Enter on the keyboard and that sends the font. If you want to change the size, again all we have to do is click on the drop down arrow. The size list only goes from 8 to 72. If you want something larger than 72 or smaller than 8, all you'd have to do is type it into this box here. For example, I could type in 2 and press enter again to confirm that. And then start typing. 
and obviously because that text is so small we can't see it we can't see it very easily so that's a very small size a very large size if I type in 100 and, or 130 and again press enter you see you can have it quite large as well so that's changing font and font size if you know that like I say if you know the font that you're typing in then it's easiest to change the font before you start typing and make sure it's the right size If you need to change the font or size after the fact, then you need to select that text, and we'll look at that in a different video. Something to be aware of when you're typing is the number of spaces after a full stop and a comma. After a full stop, you can have one or two spaces. doesn't matter which one you choose, but it's consistency that's important. We can check consistency by turning on the show hide option and every time you see a little spot that is a space so you see in between each of these words we've got that tiny little spot that's where I've pressed the space bar after a comma it's always one space At the end of a paragraph, this is where we press the Enter key. So if I press Enter now, and can you see that large gaps, or a large gap, has been inserted in between the first paragraph, and this is the second paragraph. This is a default setting in 2007. It used to be, in earlier versions of Word, that if you wanted a clear line space between paragraphs, you would have to press Enter twice. With 2007, by default, you'll only have to press it once, because a clear line space has now been deemed appropriate in between paragraphs. If you want to change that, we can see in page layout in this tab we've got spacing before and after a paragraph and again by default it's set to 10 points if you wanted to change that you could set it to naught points or you could increase it like I say by default it is set to 10 so that's word to begin with uh, basic typing, changing font and size.